Welcome back. We're thrilled to present yet another astonishing story. Greta. Still soundly asleep. Returned home late the previous day after attending a friend's birthday party. Though nobody inquired about her whereabouts. She felt a need to explain herself. Perhaps reminiscent of a time when her husband perceived her as an ordinary girl lacking wealth or connections. Despite their mutual infatuation in the past. Those days had faded away. Meanwhile. Alex commenced his day with his customary contrasting shower followed by a thorough towel off. Confronting his reflection in the mirror. A ritual that perennially posed a challenge. He grappled with an apprehension slowly mounting over the years. The initial traces of time on his once appealing countenance served as a reminder that a marketable appearance was his most valuable asset. He often quipped. A marketable look is our best attribute. A maxim typically relevant to professional pursuits. To him. Presenting oneself as fresh and unwilted akin to a recently cut flower was crucial. Lately. He found himself reiterating this simple truth. Recognizing the need to work diligently to retain youth and beauty. Surveying his surroundings. Alex grinned approvingly at his mirrored doppelganger. Not too shabby. He thought. Celebrating yet another day claimed from the relentless passage of time. Undoubtedly, concealing one's age at forty was challenging. Yet deemed advantageous. He acknowledged that men of his age weren't often bestowed with trust. Be it in their careers or relationships. He contemplated the preference of yesterday's schoolgirls for older men. Acknowledging their belief in the perceived wisdom. Reliability and financial stability that age brings. In their eyes. A man in his prime was a rational choice. Despite his facial features remaining distinct. Subtle contours began to form. His complexion remained vibrant. A testament to both the skill of a skilled beautician and his unwavering dedication to self-care. Abstaining from alcohol. Quitting cigarettes. Adhering to a nutritious diet. Sound sleep. And regular exercise constituted his regimen. At times. He confessed. Temptations to indulge in forbidden pleasures arose. Yet his commitment to maintaining his appearance prevailed. Such dedication was imperative for someone in his line of work. Living healthily was not merely a choice but a professional obligation. He regarded himself as both a devotee of a healthy lifestyle and a client of a proficient hairdresser. Speaking of which, Alex inspected his hair. Acknowledging it was time for another visit to Nana. The only hairdresser he trusted for the past five years. When Nana inquired about the style, he replied, You know best. Nana. Make it look natural. Please. As she commenced her work, Alex reflected on the misconceptions surrounding his life. Many assumed that being married to a wealthy, well-groomed woman signified an effortless victory. However, he knew better than anyone that those propagating such notions were oblivious to the genuine intricacies of his reality. Greta, Alex's affluent wife, owed her wealth to her ex-husband. However, Despite being married to a woman who provided him a well-paid job, Alex lived in constant apprehension. The fear of boring his stunning wife lingered, driving him to persistently strive for attractiveness. His life involved regular visits from cosmetologists, massage therapists, and fitness trainers, constituting a familiar albeit expensive routine. Yet. Alex understood that external allure was insufficient. He mastered the art of crafting unique compliments, refined his lovemaking skills, and even embraced watching Greta's beloved melodramas. Nonetheless, anxiety about an uncertain future plagued his every morning. They say teenagers' tempestuous behavior stems from hormones. But 18-year-old Kevin was far from ordinary as portrayed by Mrs. Helen. 
the provocatively promiscuous neighbor. Kevin was distinct. A notion commonly expressed among married women who disdained Helen for her audacious charm that captivated their husbands. Helen's presence in the neighborhood was an anticipated event, attracting neighbors under various pretenses. While some feigned tasks like urgent car washes or carpet dusting, others merely lounged on benches, all secretly eager to catch a glimpse of the new neighbor. Rumors swirled around the arrival of an enigmatic young and beautiful stranger who moved into the vacant apartment on the second floor. Observers noted her solo appearances, fueling speculation about her identity and purpose in their small town. Kevin never expected such fervor over seemingly mundane reasons like a new neighbor moving in. However, the arrival was anything but ordinary. The furniture was transported not by professional movers but by impeccably dressed men. Clearly friends of the newcomer. When the door finally opened, an entirely unfamiliar figure emerged. A slender person. Seemingly a girl at first glance. With long blonde hair styled into an unconventional braid. Dyed with fiery pink tips, this person cheerfully greeted the neighbors appearing significantly younger than expected, sparking surprise among onlookers. Kevin's mother, pretending to enjoy the fresh air nearby, speculated that the newcomer appeared older than her proclaimed age. Kevin, puzzled, couldn't discern the supposed wrinkles or crocodile-like skin beneath the stranger's smile. If there were wrinkles on the face of the stranger, no one seemed to notice amidst her radiant and genuinely warm smile. Even freckles. Rather than detracting from her sunny demeanor. Added to it. Their presence gave her a human touch. Making her appear more lifelike rather than resembling a mere piece of art. Notably. Kevin observed her donning snow-white sneakers. The men accompanying her glanced back only to swiftly regain composure upon hearing their wives' disapproving hisses. The persistent discontent among the neighbors persisted for a week after the incident involving a brave man who ventured to help the new girl. Despite her polite acceptance of tea and cookies, the situation quickly escalated when the man's wife intervened, resulting in a clamor of condemnations directed at unscrupulous women who dared to offer hospitality to other women's husbands. The marks left on the daredevil's face. Scratch marks and a prominent bruise under his eye. Served as a stark warning to everyone else. The new neighbor, Miss Helen, remained silent. Garnering herself more attention, fame, and notoriety. Little was known about Miss Helen beyond her name and apparent single status. Various rumors circulated. Some claiming she had been a prostitute in her youth. Accumulating wealth by the age of 30 to secure a comfortable retirement. Others suggested she had affluent patrons providing her with a monthly allowance. A less popular version given the absence of super-rich individuals in their town. The community continued to buzz with increasingly wild theories. Fueling a rising tide of animosity. An attitude that perplexed young Kevin. Despite Miss Helen's modest behavior, her kindness toward neighbors in need and her efforts to aid ailing pets were overlooked or disregarded by the neighborhood. Kevin, witnessing the unjust treatment of this seemingly beautiful and kind woman, pondered the root cause of such unfairness. He concluded it stemmed from a common human sentiment, envy. Despite their affluent neighborhood, the residents were ordinary people, Young women were expected to marry early, have children by their mid-twenties, prioritizing family above themselves. Until recently, these once young and beautiful women carried the weight of self-denial, discarding what they deemed excessive or costly. Beauty, youth, and health. By the time they reached thirty, their former beauty had faded, clad in track suits, their once lustrous hair now tied up carelessly. They epitomized a kind of glory in their selfless devotion to loved ones and aspirations for their children's better lives. 
However, there was one aspect nature hadn't endowed upon them, even the slightest trace of typical human selfishness. This quality remained invisible as long as everyone around them adhered to similar principles. Yet, when the audacious Helen entered their midst with her contented smile, gentle demeanor, and well-groomed appearance, these women were offended. Their offense deepened upon learning that Helen was a decade older than 25. It didn't occur to them that Helen's beauty stemmed from her habit of dedicating time and resources to herself. She flaunted youthful attire, which irked them even more because it suited her impeccably. Helen, without children or familial responsibilities, strolled her French bulldog while tired mothers managed their sleepy children. Unlike them, she never looked weary, perturbed, or worn out. A stark contrast that stirred resentment. I detest her. Kevin's mother uttered as she vigorously wiped the windows. A clear sign of her foul mood. Kevin. Aware that his mother's window cleaning signaled her displeasure. Knew his attempts to alleviate her frustration were falling short. The sight of Helen casually walking her dog didn't improve his mother's temperament either. Why shouldn't she take care of her beauty when she has no worries or constraints? His mother grumbled. Observing cautiously from behind his mother. Kevin noticed Helen in a tight-fitting white t-shirt and pink jeans. Her unchanged white sneakers a defiant statement against the surroundings. He found the t-shirt particularly appealing. Not because it accentuated her figure excessively. But because it highlighted her graceful shoulders. Supple waist. And sun-kissed skin in a modest neckline. Even from a distance. A delicate fragrance of purity and youthful freshness seemed to radiate from Helen. Enchanting Kevin's senses. However. His mother caught him in the act and swiftly waved the cloth at him. Ordering him to avert his gaze. What are you staring at? Get out of here. I won't have her seducing you kids. You rascal. His mother scolded with an air of animosity. Kevin was unable to contain his frustration any longer. What has she done wrong? She's simply living her life. He retorted. Seeking to understand the unexplained aversion towards Helen. His mother's response was swift and fierce. Her face contorted with vehement hatred. Momentarily startling Kevin. What do you mean what does she live on? She doesn't work. Doesn't have a husband. Yet men visit her. Sometimes twice a day. Do you understand what she does for a living? His mother's voice dripped with anticipation. Hoping for a reaction of disgust or indignation from her son. Disappointed by Kevin's indifferent shrug. She turned away in frustration. But she earns. Doesn't she? It's a job too. Mom. Kevin replied nonchalantly reaching for the cloth to take over the window cleaning. His mother, irked by his indifference, accused him of wanting to gaze at the shameless woman, instead of doing chores. Reluctantly, Kevin headed to the hallway to fetch groceries as instructed. As he slipped into his dusty sneakers, now bearing an unconventional brown hue from traversing the city streets, Kevin pondered the lack of excitement in their town. He mused over how the presence of an attractive woman immediately stirred heightened and aggressive attention. Leaving little room for anything else to captivate the community's interest. His thoughts gravitated back to Helen's white t-shirt. Marveling at how she managed to keep it pristine amidst the town's relentless dust. Lost in contemplation. Kevin unexpectedly bumped into Helen in the driveway. Catching Courier's inquisitive gaze. Hello. Friend. Kevin greeted the furry companion. Extending a friendly gesture to pet the lively dog. However. When it came to addressing Helen. Words failed him. And he could only manage a meager. How do you do? Hello. Kevin. Greeted Helen. Flashing a warm and friendly smile. 
Are you heading to the store? Sure. Which way? Can I get you anything? Just say the word. And I'll be right back. Kevin offered with enthusiasm. Could you grab me some salt? Helen requested. Let me give you some money for it. No. I don't want any money. But if you offer me some tea. I'll gladly accept. Kevin replied. Feeling a surge of excitement at the prospect of spending time with this captivating woman. Consider it an offer then. Helen agreed. And those words sounded like melodious music to Kevin's ears. He dashed off from the driveway. Determined to make the most of this opportunity. Thoughts raced through his mind. He promised himself that from that moment on. He'd consider himself a fortunate person. Perhaps today would mark the end of his childhood. If his mother's words held true. His savings from his part-time job might be enough. However, the anticipation and nerves hit him hard as he approached Helen's apartment. His palms grew damp. And perspiration soaked his back. He felt a need to freshen up and prayed he wouldn't collapse from the overwhelming rush of emotions. Upon ringing the bell, Helen promptly opened the door. Leaving Kevin utterly astonished to see her in casual home attire. His friends or family at home typically wore robes or ill-fitting pajamas referred to as house suits. Whereas Helen appeared stunning in a fitted blue sundress. Accentuating her waist. And casually pinning her beautiful hair at the nape of her neck. I brought you some salt. Kevin stuttered. Feeling the weight of the situation and his own nervousness. Helen smiled warmly and stepped aside. Inviting him in. Come in. I've already set the table. As he stepped into her inviting apartment. The nervous tension rose within Kevin. Realizing he was now alone with this intriguing woman. Away from prying eyes. Inside the apartment. The kitchen was set. Awaiting their tea time. Kevin. His cheeks flushed with embarrassment. Followed Helen. Observing her quirky and adorable pet. The fat and funny-looking courier. Rolling around playfully. Stepping further into her cherished space. Kevin couldn't help but feel a mix of excitement and anxiety. About to have a tete-a-tete -tete with this enigmatic woman. Kevin found himself in a state of utter confusion, mere minutes ago. He presumed that simply arriving here would unfold everything seamlessly. Yet now, facing the intriguing Helen, he pondered what lay beyond the upcoming tea session. How did things progress for women like her? Did one need to articulate their intentions or would she intuit them? How did one negotiate the terms? And what if it was beyond his means? Most importantly, how could he conceal that she was his first endeavor into such interactions? These thoughts tormented him as Helen calmly poured tea. He wished fervently that this woman could be just that. A woman. Not a professional. And would fancy him in return. Imaginations swirled in his mind. Envisioning his hand exploring her waist. Kissing her neck tenderly. As she stood there, invitingly close, attempting to suppress the tremble in his hands, Kevin mustered the courage to draw closer and cautiously put his arm around Helen's slender waist. Her perfume, delicate and fresh, teased his senses, compelling him to inhale deeply. Yet, Helen's sudden pause and swift reaction startled him. Step back. Or I'll spill the kettle on you. She warned. Causing Kevin to retract his hands immediately. Sorry. He muttered. Feeling a mix of hurt and shame. It's just something they say about you. That I'm a prostitute and men come to me calmly. Sit down. Kevin. I know. Helen replied calmly. Her demeanor unwavering. As he settled into a chair and accepted the tea. Its aroma. A blend of peculiar herbs. 
familiar lemon, and a hint of chocolate, wafted through the air. It's not true. What they say. Kevin insisted. Gossip always lies. Helen shrugged. Unfazed. Men do come to me. But their interest is different. She explained. Meeting his gaze without a trace of discomfort. Gradually regaining his composure. Kevin blurted in astonishment. Do you really sell moonshine? Helen chuckled. Revealing teeth like radiant pearls. No. Kevin. I'm a dressmaker. I make men's suits. I used to work in Italy. But I earn more this way. Would you like to see? Inviting him into a room filled with mannequins and patterns. Helen showed him around. Revealing a table strewn with various designs and a sewing machine by the window. God! Kevin exclaimed in disbelief. Could it really be that easy? Helen. Measuring him with a tape. Calmly replied. You see how it is. People say things without knowing what they mean. It's very simple. Even mundane. I saw a movie with Monica Bellucci about gossip. It's interesting. You should watch it if you get a chance. As Kevin left Helen's apartment. A blend of contemplation and agitation clouded his mind. It wasn't solely because the enigmatic Helen wasn't a mystical love priestess but an ordinary craftsman. For the young 15-year-old Kevin. A sense of bewilderment enveloped him as he grappled with the depth of human malice for the first time. His tender age prevented him from comprehending that their bitterness didn't stem from their hearts but from the despair ingrained within them. Over time. An unlikely bond had developed between the teenage boy and the mature woman. Evolving their relationship beyond conventional norms. Kevin found himself often dropping by for tea with Helen. Or as he now respectfully called her. Miss Helen. Engaging in extensive conversations that gradually acquainted him with her life's journey. As Kevin got to know her better. The narrative of Miss Helen's life unfolded before him. She hailed from a place far from here. A land in the south where winters brought sporadic snowfall. Quickly dissolving at the touch of the next day's warmth. Apricot trees painted the air with their sweet fragrance. Intertwining with the bitter scent of wormwood. Nights in summers were adorned with stars that seemed within arm's reach. Inviting one to pluck them from the sky and adorn oneself like a radiant brooch. A surreal enchanting sight that lingered in Miss Helen's memories. You know. Miss Helen reminisced dreamily. Sometimes I think that's why I became a dressmaker. It's because of that southern summer sky. I dreamt of a dress. The color of night. Adorned with a star right here on the shoulder. I even learned to sew because of that dream. She vividly recounted her earlier days. Living in a cozy home with her parents and grandmother until the unbearable heat forced her parents to relocate her to a cooler dacha. Not wanting to leave the elderly grandmother alone. Across the street resided her father's cousin. Mr. Teddy. With his family. Creating a bustling atmosphere filled with relatives of various ages. From infants to teenagers. Initially daunted by the prospect of residing alone. Helen gradually found solace in her independence. She relished the liberty it offered. Unaccountable to anyone for her whereabouts or curfew. Exploring the neighborhood became her pastime. Indulging in late-night conversations with neighbors or reveling in the tranquility of solitary walks along the seashore. Amidst one of these serene walks. Fate intertwined her path with Alex. It was a blustery late autumn day. The sky ominous. While seagulls danced in the winds. Amidst the cacophony. She spotted a solitary figure. A young man with long. Unkempt curls. Absorbed in a book. The wind teased the pages as he read. And his enigmatic gaze met hers. Instantly evoking a smile. In that poignant moment. 
a 17-year-old Helen experienced her first brush with love. A young romance devoid of reservations or pragmatic thoughts. Seemingly eternal. The intensity of that feeling engulfed her without hesitation. Leading her to ponder the concept of freedom at that tender age. She reflected on the perceived loss of her girlhood freedom. Grappling with the entanglements that come with the dawn of passionate affection. As her reminiscences unfolded, Kevin listened intently, piecing together the mosaic of Miss Helen's past, drawing closer to understanding the complexities that shaped her present. When deeply in love, as she was, Helen was eager to marry Alex. However, Alex did not share her enthusiasm. He argued that Helen's perspectives on life were too simple and uncomplicated for his ambitious aspirations. Believing his place was in the bustling city where the future lay. He expressed this while tenderly kissing Helen. Saying. We can't stay here. We'll end up like Mr. Teddy. Is that really what you want? Helen was disturbed by these words. Mr. Teddy. A middle-aged man. Had succumbed to alcoholism and a lack of purpose. Once a skilled horse club instructor, he couldn't adapt to teaching wealthy individuals, whom he despised for their sudden wealth, contrasting sharply with their troubled pasts. His wife, Mrs. Faina, once rumored to be beautiful, now concealed under flower-stained oversized robes, toiled and baking to support their large, chaotic family. Despite her weariness, she found solace sitting quietly on their porch in the evenings. Helen felt immense pity for Mrs. Faina, who seemed to have forgotten her own desires and womanhood in caring for her family. Trying to help, Helen offered to assist during her vacation. Making dough, caring for the children, and offering to take Mrs. Faina to the sea for respite. But Mrs. Faina dismissed her advice, warning her not to rush into marriage, emphasizing there's always time. Ignoring this advice, Helen's boyfriend, Alex, moved to the city, promising to take her along after a year. Initially frequent letters dwindled, and it became evident that Helen was turning into an obligation for Alex rather than the cherished love she once was. In the end, without waiting for the promised year to conclude, their relationship faltered. Helen took it upon herself to visit her lover to resolve their issues. However, upon her arrival, she couldn't find him at the address written on the envelope. Instead, she encountered silence as no one responded when she knocked. A neighbor informed her that the young man seldom returned home. Undeterred, Helen sat on the steps for nearly a day, patiently awaiting her beloved. Finally, when Alex appeared, he greeted her exuberantly, suggesting they head home. But when Helen expressed her desire for a more stable relationship, Alex dismissed her wishes. I've learned a lot. Helen, it's better than aimlessly waiting like a stray dog. Alex remarked. Back home. Everyone knows you. They'll welcome you and offer a good meal. Here. Nobody wants anyone. The people here are distant and peculiar. He gestured toward the well-dressed locals. Commenting. They may look sharp and speak smartly. But their eyes lack warmth. Do you see that? Helen nodded in agreement. Eventually. They returned to their familiar streets and acquaintances. Getting married soon after. Alex found work selling draft beer. Providing a stable income. But life became mundane. Helen felt hesitant about having children, partly due to observing the experiences of others. We led a tranquil life. But it became monotonous. Helen lamented. The routine began to stifle us. Weekdays were predictable. Work. 
dinner, TV, and sleep. Even weekends felt repetitive. Feeling trapped. Helen realized the issue wasn't solely about having kids or her husband's drinking habits. It was the stifling routine and the sense of being trapped in a sleepy town that bothered her. I realized we had to leave before we stagnated completely. Helen reflected. But when I brought this up to my husband. He brushed it off. Citing his own experiences of feeling unwanted elsewhere. Frustrated yet determined. Helen resolved to persist. I'll wait and be patient. She thought. Just like a fisherman waiting for a catch. Man isn't so different. Patience and persistence will lead us through. I pleaded endlessly with Alex. Urging him to give our life another chance in the big city. After numerous requests. He finally relented. I vividly recall the packing frenzy. But amidst it all. A visit from Mrs. Thena interrupted us. Observing our trunks. She remained silent. Calmly sipping her tea. I anticipated her thoughts. Waiting for her to speak. Eventually. After finishing her tea. She uttered. You're fleeing from the wrong place. Helen. And departed without further explanation. At the time. I didn't dwell on her words. I believed I knew better where to escape to and what to escape from. The following day. We relocated. Alex. My husband. Appeared reconciled but lacked his usual cheer. Yet. I paid little heed. I felt we had escaped the mundane and were destined for a better life. In our new abode. I found work at Italyer. While Alex became engrossed in his role as a consultant at a computer store. Our routines diverged. And I sensed a growing rift between us. Formerly. We shared a blanket at night. Finding solace in our togetherness. Now. We slept apart. The idea of having a child crossed my mind. Perhaps it could rekindle our connection. However. It seemed I dwelled on it too long. As Alex's interests veered drastically away from mine. Rumors circulated. Claiming encounters between him and girls from the atelier across the street from his store. They spoke of a stunning young girl. Barely 18. With whom he interacted. I. At around 30. Couldn't help but feel a pang of insecurity. They painted her as an otherworldly beauty a slender face, captivating blue eyes, lips like a bow, and cascading golden curls down to her waist. She was a vision beyond compare. Reading their accounts, I couldn't help but question myself. Was I inadequate compared to her? Had Alex seen a more beautiful woman than me? These doubts lingered, fueled by their admiration for this enigmatic figure named Miss Helen. The neighbor, consumed by infatuation for Alex, seemed oblivious to my presence. It was as if he couldn't see or hear me when he returned home. Lost in his thoughts. Occasionally, he'd snap out of it and ask in surprise if I had said anything. I accepted this behavior and visited my husband's store. Startling them both. I chose not to confront the young girl. After all. I am an adult. Alex was visibly tense. Fearing a potential scandal. I took the girl aside. Maintaining composure. And gently questioned her motives. Why pursue someone else's husband when she possessed youth and allure? Was there no single man in the vast city for her? I inquired if she believed Alex was leaving me for her. Miss Helen recounted the encounter. Stating that the girl cried. Perhaps out of embarrassment or anger towards both of us. To comfort her. I treated her to coffee and cake. Feeling sympathy for a young girl lacking life experience. After consoling her. She revealed her love for Alex. Acknowledging his reciprocation. Astonishingly. 
She mentioned Alex's intent to leave but cited my illness as an obstacle. She claimed he supported me and that I was terminally ill. Implying he'd marry her after my passing. Returning home. I felt lost. Reminiscing about the house I left behind. Trivial thoughts of ripe apricots and misses. Faina's delightful baking occupied my mind. Regretfully. I hadn't sought her recipes. Amidst these musings. I felt an urge to confide in her. Wishing for her reassuring voice. Attempting to contact her. I eventually succeeded. Elaborating on a fictitious life of prosperity and contentment. However. Mrs. Faina. Without preamble. Demanded the truth. Tearfully. I confessed about Alex's affair and the lies he spun. Perplexed by my sudden emotional outpouring. It wasn't the betrayal that wounded me but the years of dedication to our family. Only to be discarded like refuse by a young girl. Mrs. Faina's words lingered in my mind as she recounted her advice, not to rush into marriage and to let things unfold naturally with a partner. She warned that if I truly loved my husband, not to worry about his strain, as he'd eventually return. Conversely, if there was no love, then there was no need for him. Her words left me pondering whether I truly loved Alex or if it was merely habit that bound us. The night was filled with an unsettling silence that made everything seem mundane. Almost inconsequential. I lay awake questioning my feelings. Unable to find a definitive answer. Amidst this uncertainty. My husband stirred beside me. Seemingly indifferent to the turmoil within me. It felt as though everything was meant to be this way. Miss Helen. After a long pause. Revealed that she never left him. Although she questioned it herself. This confession brought a silence between us. Later. Alex woke. And we talked incessantly throughout the night and into the morning. He profusely apologized. Swearing there were no genuine feelings for the other girl and that it wouldn't happen again. He suggested returning home. Back to where life was simpler. Surprisingly. I didn't oppose the idea. It dawned on me that perhaps life's essence remains the same. Whether in a bustling city or on the edge of a forest. Quietly. We commenced our journey back home. Intending to arrive just in time for the new year. Our plan was to restore our house. Relishing in delicacies while sitting together on our cherished sofa. I envisioned us sipping champagne. Wrapped in a shared blanket. Engaging in heartfelt conversations. However. Reality took a different turn. Upon our return. We were met with devastating news. Mrs. Faina. Shrouded in grief. Informed us of Mr. Teddy's passing. He had tragically drowned in the sea. Succumbing to his usual drunken state. Our anticipated New Year's celebration turned into a mournful memorial. Yet. Amidst the sorrow. Mrs. Faina revealed a surprising turn of events. Mr. Teddy. Despite retiring from equestrian sports. Had compiled his knowledge and experiences into a series of notebooks. The new owner of the club discovered these. Publishing them as a successful textbook bringing significant royalties. This unexpected windfall was promised to Mrs. Faina, proving to be a substantial boon. At the wake, the club's owner, a decent man, made an appearance. His presence surprised me, as I had initially mistaken him for an old, disagreeable cousin. Following Mr. Teddy's passing, Life continued. And we mourned his loss. Mrs. Faina struggled through her grief. And I made it a routine to visit her daily. Sometimes lending a hand with baking or providing a distraction from her sorrow. Meanwhile. 
Alex resumed his work. Selling beer as usual. Then. An unexpected incident occurred. As I walked home from work one day. I suddenly felt unwell. A wave of dizziness hit me. And despite the cool weather. I was overwhelmed by heat. As if standing under scorching water. I had to sit down on the curb. Struggling to catch my breath and battling the urge to lie down. Knowing I might faint. Thankfully. A concerned neighbor passed by and assisted me home. After excusing myself to the bathroom. I freshened up with cold water. Suddenly. The memory struck that I always kept pregnancy tests handy just in case. Curiosity led me to take the test. Concealing my nervousness behind a facade of indifference. As the minutes ticked by. I found myself staring at two unmistakable lines. Confusion swept over me. Becoming a mother was an overwhelming reality. I grappled with the implications. Life was undoubtedly going to change. But the magnitude and direction of that change were uncertain. The question of whether to disclose this news to my husband lingered in my mind. Stepping out of the bath. Clutching the test. I overheard Alex on the phone. Mentioning our return due to my illness. His conversation revealed plans to remarry after Mrs. Faina's burial. Focusing on inheriting her property. As I contemplated sharing the news of the pregnancy. His betrayal unfolded before me. In a moment of quiet resolve. I confronted him from behind. Whispering my decision. You won't wait. You traitor. Neither will your girl. Pack your bags and vanish from my sight. Alex's reaction was swift and startled when I confronted him. I immediately reassured him. Explaining that what he thought he heard was entirely incorrect. His frantic gaze searched for some explanation. Leaving him visibly shaken. Yet. A strange sense of relief washed over me. And I found myself laughing effortlessly. Feeling a weight lifted off my chest. I was grateful to him for unintentionally freeing me from a falsehood. I'm not lying. I asserted. Finally. He translated his thoughts into words. Meeting my eyes with a disconcerting smile. Reminiscent of a cunning cat eyeing stolen meat. His question about forgetting the good things made me realize something profound. I didn't love him anymore. The realization felt liberating. I don't love you anymore. I responded bluntly. It was a moment of clarity. And I felt oddly content within myself. I couldn't deny the blessings in my life, a good job. A place to call home. And the anticipation of a child. To me. It seemed like a fortunate turn despite parting ways with a dishonest man. His sudden accusation about not bleeding him enough before leaving. Followed by his threatening stance with an axe. Startled and frightened me. I tried to calm him down. Whispering and cautiously maneuvering past him to escape to Mrs. Faina's house across the street. Her silent gesture of comfort. Wrapping me in her shawl. Brought a sense of solace. In Mrs. Faina's kitchen. Over a cup of tea. I disclosed my pregnancy and the terrifying episode involving Alex and the axe. Overwhelmed with fear. I considered involving the police. Yet I dreaded the repercussions and the potential danger if he discovered my involvement. Mrs. Faina listened attentively and offered refuge. Suggesting I stay with her for a while. The following morning. As if by a cruel twist of fate. The world outside appeared unchanged despite the turmoil in my life. Feeling lost and unsure of my next step. I contemplated seeking refuge with my parents but hesitated. Not wanting to burden them with my problems. Staying at Mrs. Faina's was a temporary reprieve. A place to gather my thoughts before deciding my next move. The uncertainty ahead loomed large. 
leaving me with a jumble of emotions and a need for direction. As the day unfolded, the evening brought yet another surprising turn. It seemed like each day carried its own unforeseen events, leaving me little time to recuperate before the next shock. I was occupied in the kitchen, busily rolling out dough, when I noticed a car pulling up outside my house. A girl emerged from the car, her back facing me, obscuring her face. Yet, I could discern enough to draw a familiar conclusion. She was the tall girl I'd seen with Alex before. Alex came out to assist her. And they greeted a lady named Mrs. Faina. As I glanced out the window. Mrs. Faina couldn't contain her amusement. Leaving me torn between laughter and tears. Days passed. And to my surprise. The girl didn't leave. In fact. She emerged from the house wearing my robe. Accompanying Alex for a stroll. I couldn't fathom her interest in my dress. She didn't seem destitute. Mrs. Faina observed this spectacle with a knowing grin. She leaned in and remarked. Your Alex is quite the fool. He's taken up with an older woman. Stunned. I inquired. But she's young. Isn't she? Mrs. Faina dropped a bombshell. You do realize that my eldest daughter, the doctor, performs plastic surgery. This young woman is a regular client. Striving to appear 20 when she's actually 45, she already has grandchildren and a son who looks older than her. As if that wasn't enough. Mrs. Faina continued. I happen to know her ex-husband. The owner of the local horse club. I was on the brink of disbelief. To think that Alex had chosen such an intriguing mistress. He suggested. Visit your parents. And I'll speak with the club owner to intervene with my ex-girlfriend and your Romeo. Unsure initially. I decided to go along. Opting not to disclose anything to my parents and pretending it was a casual visit for fresh air in the countryside. However, I underestimated my parents. Instead of a dilapidated house, they had created a paradise. I envisioned dad tinkering away and mom tending to cucumbers and tomatoes. But what I found was breathtaking. A view of the seashore from their window. A flourishing garden adorned with chairs for grandma and swings for mom. Dad had even crafted fountains with goldfish. To my surprise, grandma's neighbor gardeners, mature adults, were planning to wed a distinguished researcher. Grandma, behaving coyly, invited me to visit. Their affectionate gestures touched my heart deeply. In the evenings, a gentleman suitor would visit grandma, charming her with baskets of fresh fruits, honey, and always a bouquet of flowers. Vibrant and alive. Unlike the lackluster ones from the store. I couldn't help but wish that modern men would learn from his courtly ways. The aroma of real flowers. So intoxicating when held. Filled my days. Each day. I handpicked fragrant blossoms for my beloved. My grandmother would set a table in the garden. Adorned with exquisite cups, jams, rusks, and buns from our collection. They sat there late into the evening, discussing art and paintings. Our elderly young man would recite poetry to his grandmother. And sometimes they'd stroll hand in hand or head to the sea. Their romance was captivating. Akin to an engrossing movie where you couldn't look away always curious about what might happen next. Three days flew by. And I found myself needing to return home due to the most mundane reasons. One morning. A dark grey SUV parked outside our fence. The owner happened to be the same person who owned the equestrian club that the late Mr. Teddy despised. Despite that. He approached me respectfully. Introducing himself as Mr. 
Peter. Impeccably dressed in a suit and tie. Covered in juice while collecting jam. I felt entirely disheveled. Yet he seemed oblivious. Treating the situation as if it were a formal reception. He assured me. Helen. You can return to your house without any fear. Neither your ex-husband or Greta will bother you again. If you wish. I'm prepared to escort you back right away. Doubting his words. I challenged. Take me back then. Surprisingly. He fulfilled his promise. Not only was there no sign of my ex-husband, but all the minor repairs were completed. A new stove adorned the kitchen. And a small room had transformed into a nursery with cribs and toys. Incredulous. I turned to Mr. Peter. Questioning his connections. Softly. He held my hand and explained. I'd like to apologize for my ex-wife. Greta. We parted ways long ago. And she probably sought companionship after feeling alone. Please try not to harbor resentment towards her. Especially considering your breakup with Alex. Sensing there was more to his story. I awaited further explanation. After some hesitation. He asked. Would you join me for dinner tonight? I believe there's much we could discuss together. By the way. I heard your father is looking after your grandmother. Am I boring you? Kevin. She asked. Pulling herself up. He reassured her. Eager to know what came next. The ending was quite simple. She smiled. Mr. Peter and I got married soon after. In due course. I gave birth to two boys. My grandmother agreed to marry her boyfriend. And Mrs. Faina became a successful businesswoman. Opening her pastry shop where her two daughters now work. Before long. Mrs. Faina found herself in need of hiring additional help due to an overwhelming number of orders. She was gearing up to publish a book containing her own recipes. An exciting venture that Kevin sincerely admired. Frankly. Kevin confessed. While you were recounting everything, I found myself more concerned about Mrs. Faina. The amount of work she does to support her family is remarkable. She's an exceptional woman. Miss Helen said fondly. People like her keep things running smoothly. And what about your ex-husband? Alex? Kevin inquired. Any updates on him? Miss Helen chuckled and shared. It's a bit amusing. Really? Alex married that Greta of his. Only discovering her true age and the fact that she had a grown-up son and a couple of grandchildren after the wedding. This understandably offended him. She continued. There were even rumors of him wanting a divorce. But Greta. A cunning lady. Gave him a small business. A few flower pavilions. As a gift. However. It was conditional. She made him the manager. But upon divorce. He could lose both the position and substantial income instantly. Who would want that? Especially someone accustomed to a lavish lifestyle. So now. Alex lives with Greta. Managing a flower store. Meticulously maintaining his appearance to keep her interested. Miss Helen added wryly. Just as she was speaking. Kevin interjected. If you're married with children. Why do you live here alone? I'm here temporarily. Miss Helen explained softly. Planning to explore the market before returning home to my husband and sons. Would you consider joining us for tea and cake tonight? Kevin offered unexpectedly. My family would enjoy your company. Miss Helen hesitated. Surprised by the invitation. Do you really think your family would welcome me? They don't know me at all. That's precisely why they might not seem happy. Kevin reasoned. If they knew the kind and genuine person you are. They'd like you. 
you'd have plenty of friends here. Miss Helen shrugged. Uncertain. It's unlikely to work. Kevin. Today. I'm heading back home. Kevin nodded. Regretful but understanding. He tried to envision the town Miss Helen would return to. A picturesque scene with apricot trees. The scent of the sea. And the aroma of pastries from Mrs. Faina's shop. I'd love to visit you someday. He expressed. Would that be alright? Of course. She exclaimed joyfully. I'd be delighted to see you. On his way home. Kevin stopped by a beauty salon. Now certain of how to spend his summer money, he approached the reception desk and inquired. Can I purchase a gift certificate from you? Later. He diverted his mother from her cleaning and led her into the kitchen. With a smile. Kevin handed his mother an elegant envelope. This is for you. Mom. He said. It's a certificate to a beauty salon. You can get a manicure. Dye your hair. And try different procedures. His mother looked at the envelope. Slightly confused. She muttered about the presumed expense. Yet Kevin noticed a fleeting smile on her lips. A moment of happiness that she quickly concealed behind a familiar grunt. Almost as if she felt ashamed of that unintentional burst of joy. It's not nothing. Mom. Kevin affectionately reassured her. You're beautiful in your way. And all beautiful women deserve to be pampered so they can always stay beautiful. He then noticed tears in his mother's eyes. Thank you. My son. She whispered. Hugging Kevin tightly. He realized it might have been the first time she hugged him like that since he was a child. You're a big boy now. Aren't you? She remarked softly. That's good. Mommy. He replied. Patting her shoulder. Now. Go get some rest. If you want. I can take care of the cleaning myself. Later. In the evening. Kevin stepped out onto the balcony just as Miss Helen emerged from her porch. She leisurely walked to her car. Placing her dog inside before getting behind the wheel. Sensing someone watching, she looked up. Spotted Kevin. And waved. Mouthing. Happily ever after. As he bid her farewell with a raised hand. Meanwhile. His father had yet to return from the garage. Kevin glanced into his parents' bedroom and paused at the doorway. His mother sat on the bed. Holding her jewelry box. Trying on various rings while softly humming. Exiting quietly. Kevin continued to the controlled pavilion. Elsewhere. Alex observed the gathering darkness with surprise. Strange. You never quite get used to how late it gets dark in the summer. He mused tiredly. Checking his watch. It was nine o'clock in the evening. Another stop at the pavilion. Then off to the supply base for roses and chrysanthemums. They're in high demand. He continued. Noting the tasks ahead, pruning the roses and dealing with the chrysanthemums. Painting them in different colors. He reflected on customers' preferences for colorful flowers and the contrast with the female worker's desire for creativity. Particularly in crafting unique flower arrangements. Those red ones over there. He directed. Seven pieces. Wrap them in cellophane. Alex navigated the intricacies of the flower business. Understanding the demands and preferences of both customers and workers. Don't cry. My dears. Alex consoled his team. I understand your desire to create beauty. But always consider who will buy such creativity. People tend to favor classics, proven options. Creativity is either free or commercial. And unfortunately, it's boring to play the same tune day after day. The girls, although feeling the weight of routine, couldn't disagree with their manager. 
Boring. Of course. They acknowledged. But that's life. Every job has its share of routine. Despite the monotony, Alex found ways to engage the girls. Often. He'd invite them to a cafe and entertain them with jokes. This endeared him to his subordinates. Who didn't hesitate to work overtime when asked. Alex himself often worked late. Mistaken by many for sheer dedication when. In reality. He simply wanted to avoid going home. His wife. Greta. In her fifties. Struggled with a perpetually somber mood. Constantly scrutinizing her reflection in the mirror. Her sullen. Closed off demeanor added years to her appearance. However. A beautician attempted to console her. Mrs. Greta. You look great. Great for an old lady, Greta retorted calmly. But since you're concerned. It's a pity there's no elixir of eternal youth. Eternal or not. Falling in love is a secret everyone knows. The beautician remarked. Greta. Uncertain. Wasn't keen on the idea of pursuing a younger husband. Recalling past disappointments. The beautician continued. Suggesting that a man in love naturally becomes more radiant. Older men seeking younger partners. It's about a youthful energy boost. But don't take it to extremes. Moderation is key. Reflecting on the conversation. Greta sat in her car for a while. Contemplating her situation. She pondered the idea of love. Recalling someone mentioning a new nightclub opening in the city. A potential opportunity for a change of pace. Greta sighed as she navigated through the narrow aisles of the club. Why are the passages so snug in here? She complained. Wrinkling her nose. Are they deliberately designed for skinny girls only? The club's name is Labyrinth. It's part of its concept. Her friend explained. Chuckling. Greta grumbled. It's not a concept. It's more about contraception. How can a couple cuddle in this tight space? There's no room for two here. Let alone the lovebirds. Come on. Don't fret. Look. There's finally an entrance to the hall ahead. Her friend said. Relieved. As they stepped into the hall. It was like entering a shipwreck-themed wonderland. The walls were adorned with depictions of sea waves. Colorful fish swam across screens. And corals and countless shells embellished the surroundings. Finding herself cautiously seated on a rickety stool shaped like a barrel. Greta's friend tapped it. Immediately. A waiter. Dressed in Jack Sparrow style. Appeared. Two bottles of rum. Please. Her friend ordered enthusiastically. Greta scowled. Muttering. I don't even like rum. However. Her attention shifted when a silhouette emerged from the dimly lit dance floor. She locked eyes with the stranger and felt engulfed in his gaze. Deep as the ocean. Intoxicating as dark rum. That evening. As she returned home slightly tipsy. She felt an unfamiliar cheerfulness. Later. As she gingerly glanced in the mirror before bed. Greta noticed a delicate pink blush on her cheeks and a sparkle in her eyes. She couldn't help but acknowledge that the beautician had been onto something after all. Her sudden change in mood didn't escape her husband's notice. Alex observed the transformation in Greta. Her humming. Smiling. An overall buoyant demeanor. He sensed her growing excitement whenever her phone buzzed. Each new message eliciting a blush. It was evident. She had a lover. Alex. Surprisingly unfazed. Acknowledged that this turn of events was inevitable. The marriage hadn't been thriving. Especially since his motives weren't rooted in emotional attachment. Recent rumors from his hometown suggested that Helen, his ex-wife, 
was happily married to the owner of the equestrian club and had given birth to twin boys. This realization left him with a sense of regret. Alex wasn't foolish enough to feel offended by his ex-wife. He held no resentment towards her. Instead, he harbored a frustration toward fate. Feeling as though life had played a trick on him. He had strived to establish a peaceful and stable life. Yet found neither in the end. It made him ponder about the unpredictability of relying on others for stability. A realization slowly dawning on him. Upon arriving home, he made a firm resolution to stroll around town. It was time to seek out new job opportunities. Particularly at Mrs. Faina's renowned confectionery. Today was a day filled with cheerful excitement. The hostess's birthday warranted grand celebrations. With all pastries exclusively French and prepared using ancient recipes. The evening promised a spectacle with fireworks dedicated to Mrs. Faina's honor. Helen noticed the transformation in Mrs. Faina's appearance. Pleasantly surprised by the radiant change. Once formidable and always amidst the heat of the oven. Mrs. Faina now bore a more pleasant and rounded figure without a hint of excess. Her complexion exuded freshness with a subtle golden hue. Far removed from any past signs of strain, the pinnacle of the celebration was yet to unfold. Mrs. Faina was about to announce her impending remarriage after five years of widowhood. Her chosen partner was a man of respectable character. The owner of the very cafe where she had previously worked for numerous years. Their relationship had been concealed initially due to the cafe owner's previous marriage. Which ended in divorce a few years ago. Now. With the divorce finalized. The cafe owner was eager to openly court Mrs. Faina. Their relationship blossoming into love. They had decided to mark their union with a honeymoon immediately after the night's fireworks display. Helen's grandmother, who cherished travel, personally curated the honeymoon itinerary. Let's begin with Prague. She suggested. There. You'll relish in delicious foods and gather recipes for your business. Next. Vienna. For music. Waltzes and an enchanting atmosphere. And finally, Paris. The city of love and wonder. Mrs. Faina, trying to ignore the light-hearted banter. Playfully plugged her ears to escape the exuberant chatter. Helen was well aware of her grandmother's unwavering determination. Once Mrs. Faina had a thought in her mind. It was near impossible to halt her spirited expressions. Grandma. Please stop. Helen intervened. I already know what you're going to say. After Paris. Venice awaits you. Romance galore. The canals. The nocturnal ambience. And the anecdotes of Casanova. Thankfully from a different era. Then. It's back home and back to work. Helen raised her gaze to the evening sky. Anticipating the imminent display of fireworks painting the night with magical bursts of color. This day was destined to be another joyous occasion. The impending happiness wasn't confined to just Mrs. Faina and her new husband. Helen envisioned their children and grandchildren enveloped in the same jubilation. They all cherished their wise matriarch. Wishing her abundant happiness. For everyone. Happiness was an enduring aspiration. One that propels people through daily challenges. Motivating them to push forward even when they feel drained of strength. Reflecting on her family. Helen recognized that happiness arrived differently for each of them. Her aunt had toiled to earn her happiness. Working persistently towards it. Conversely. Happiness had effortlessly found its way to her grandmother. But as she pondered this. Helen realized she didn't have a conclusive answer for herself. Did she truly need to ascertain this enigmatic concept of happiness? Perhaps what mattered most was her own well-being. 
Helen concluded her thoughts. Acknowledging that sometimes the quest for happiness lay not in dissecting it. But in simply embracing contentment. And with that. The story came to the end. Yet an invitation lingered for opinions and thoughts on the nature of happiness. Please share your viewpoints in the comments.